Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, August 21st. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, we saw Hurricane Grace move inland over eastern Mexico, sadly underwent a rare rapid intensification event for the kind of track that it took. Typically, they come over and have a hard time restrengthening on the other side. This one got together very quickly during the final hours before landfall and had winds in excess of 120 miles per hour at the time it moved ashore. So hoping everyone came out of this okay in eastern Mexico, the system is now dissipating over the mountains. We're now left with Hurricane Henri, which has now strengthened into a hurricane and is on its final approach toward New England. This is the current satellite view showing the zoomed in look here. The sun has set as of the beginning of this video, and we'll see that the storm has a well-defined core, and all day the key has been seeing how well this core would come together during the course of the day. The good news is it's been a gradual process, not a rapid one, so we haven't seen a really quick uptick in the intensity of the winds in Henri, but we have seen some increase, and so now the estimate is that winds are about 75 miles per hour, making this a hurricane. A couple of things to point out here. We have noted that there's some ring-like structures starting to form near the inner core. The thunderstorms are arranging themselves in curved bands very tightly wound around the center, and we can verify that from the latest microwave imagery, which shows the formation of what would eventually become an eye-like feature if it continues to develop with that little hole in the middle there, and we have some bands kind of wrapping in, spiraling tightly. That is a healthy structure that under regular circumstances would likely herald an intensification period during the next day or two. The limitation, the good news, is that there is cold water awaiting Henri as it moves northward. The Gulf Stream runs right under where the storm currently is now. And we can actually almost make it out on the infrared satellite imagery after the sun sets. There's a slight change in the shade of gray here, indicating the water temperature changes from south of this line to north of this line. So we've got warm down here, and we've got cold water up here. So we've got a storm that is now crossing over that gradient and moving into the colder water. And so that means the time during which Henri could get stronger is coming to an end within the next several hours. It won't immediately come to an end because the southern part of the circulation will still pull air over that warm water even as the center moves over the cold water. So it'll take a few hours yet for that cold water to kick in. So we could see, still see a little bit of increase in Henri's strength during the next few hours, three to six. And then after that, we'll likely see it flatten off and remain at, or maybe sink just below hurricane intensity before moving up toward the coastline. This is the recon data from the plane that is sampling the storm right now. We have had a couple of plane issues today, but this one did make it to the storm without having to turn around. And what it found is that the south side has pretty strong wind, and the strongest wind is on the east side right now. This is where sustained winds at the surface of about 75 miles per hour were found by the aircraft, and the north side weaker winds because most of the thunderstorm activity is south and west of where the center is right now. North side doesn't have so much around it, which also makes sense at this point because the water is colder here now on that side of the storm. Now the expectation is that some of this convection will eventually wrap around and start accentuating more on the west side as the storm moves up, and that's because if we go back to the larger loop, we have this upper level trough draped over Virginia now, and the flow around this is what's going to help turn Henri more toward the north and north-northwest into New England, but it's also causing an outbreak of rainfall here due to bear clinic forcing, non-tropical processes, that will start to interact with the western side of Henri's circulation, and we're likely to see the wettest part of the storm be that western side as well as the northern side as it starts to approach the coast. So we'll see a little bit of a rearranging of the circulation as it approaches. And on Recon right now, you'll see that the last two center locations it found, it's still moving east of due north. And at this point, it's east of this 71 west line. And if we look at that on the satellite picture here, that puts it due south of about... Uh, Massachusetts here and Buzzards Bay, it had not previously been forecast to get quite this far east before bending toward the left. And so if we look at the forecast from the National Hurricane Center, which currently has it moving north-northwest from this position, that had it moving toward the eastern end of Long Island and into Connecticut, it's possible we're seeing a short-term trend more toward the eastern side of this cone, which would put it closer to Narragansett Bay 
at landfall. And we'll see if that is still a trend over the next few hours, but just a heads up that that seems to be the short-term trend. But really, anyone from eastern Long Island to Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, could get the landfall here. Where there is always you know, a chance that the storm wobbles away you don't expect. There's just no way to guarantee that won't happen. So you have to assume that the storm could come ashore anywhere in this little area here where the hurricane warning is in effect. We have tropical storm warnings extending farther toward the coastlines from New York City to Cape Cod. And of course, there's more hazards than wind to worry about here. The wind was expected to be about 60 to 70 miles per hour when this comes ashore, and that will be confined mostly to the coastal areas and in and around Long Island and coastal Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Once you get inland, the wind will drop off quickly, but one of the concerns with this storm is the storm surge, because we are going to get several feet of water rise that is not common in this part of the country. And we're going to see that over a larger area than you might expect, even though the storm comes in and the core of wind is only a you know a small size, the most vicious possibly hurricane force wind will only encompass a circle that is so wide, but the water rises could extend well to the west and east of where the center comes ashore. So we could see a wide area of coastal flooding in here. And then the other thing we're watching is the slowdown that is expected as this moves. These points are 12 hours apart, and so you can see that it's moving fairly briskly right now, but then it slows down near the landfall point, and as it moves inland, it takes a full 24 hours to get into New Hampshire from the eastern Long Island point there. So that's a slow-moving storm that could drop a corridor of heavy rain in here that could cause inland freshwater flooding problems. And so we'll be watching for that as well. This is the corridor of elevated flash flooding potential. You'll notice that it is mostly weighted on the western side of the track. See how the forecast track is like this? Most of the threat is on the west side because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the heaviest rain bands are expected to be toward the north and west of the center of Henri as it moves inland. So that corresponds to the flooding threat being near the point of landfall and mostly west of the point of landfall as well. So keep in mind that it's not just about where the center tracks. Some of these hazards have nuances, and it's not all about how close you are to the center of Henri when it moves ashore. So there's just kind of a general overview of the hazards to expect from Henri. I want to stress that local officials, your NWS office, and emergency managers are a much better source than I am for the particular impacts that you can expect in your particular location. That's not really my job, and if for anyone who's new, I typically fade into the background pretty quickly as storms near landfall because my job is really to give you all a bird's eye view of what the storm is doing and the forecasting that is involved and give you a picture of what the possible futures are for a storm. Hurricanes are systems that are hard to predict. It's not an exact science. It is a good science, uh, but it is hard to get the details right. And so expressing that uncertainty and explaining how it works is kind of my function. And once this gets towards landfall, the forecasting is about over. We know where this is going, we know how strong it is, and now it's up to all of you to stay safe and have a plan of action and heed evacuation orders if they're given to you, and listen to your local officials for information that is far better and more detailed than I can provide at this point in the storm's life cycle. So this will be the last update video I give on Henri, but I will throw tidbits out there on my Twitter, at Tropical Tidbits, if you'd like to check there for any updates regarding the meteorology of the storm as it nears land. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.